I just did a video about Google I.O., but I missed something. I thought the video model was mediocre. I was wrong. Pretty nuts for a one shot, right? Like I just generated that trivially. It still costs 250 bucks a month to use any of this right now. And the UI is garbage and it's annoying as hell to use. But the quality of what you can get out of VO3 is significantly better than I thought. My tests were bad. I didn't look into it enough. And I'm making this video both because I was wrong for not better covering it, but also because I found it actually very, very fun to play with. And I wanted to share with you guys. That all said, I've already burned through most of the credits I get for the $250 and I want more. So quick break from today's sponsor and then we'll get right to it. I've been a web dev for a while and one of the most annoying things to get right is images. Seriously, I can't believe I've still been fighting this for as long as I have. I was actually gonna build my own product to solve these problems, but then I discovered today's sponsor, Image Kit. And man, I wish I knew about these guys earlier. They are so good. They're an image and video API that solves all of the problems from image resizing to transformations to video encoding and background removal even, it's kind of nuts. You probably expect this to be really complex to implement. I certainly did. Then I discovered their image transformation API. They have SDKs for all the major JavaScript frameworks. They have a really good React one, by the way. We'll look at that in a sec. But I just wanna show if you go vanilla, how easy it is to use. You have a URL endpoint for your deployment. You then give it a transform as part of the URL and then a path to the asset that you want to optimize. These assets can come from anywhere that's S3 compatible, as well as a couple other providers they work with. Or you can do the much easier thing, just give it the full file URL for the actual original image. So if you already have them somewhere and you just wanna serve better image resolutions or transformed image, optimized images, whatever you wanna do, automatic watermarks, you just change the URL everywhere in the code base. It's relatively simple. It's kind of insane how much easier it is to set things up here than it is on other places. And if it was just image transformations, that'd be cool, but they go way further. All the same commands work on video. So you can take a video and change the resolution of it just by putting a transform in the URL. You can automatically create thumbnails for a given video the same way. So you know how annoying it is to get a thumbnail from a given user video? Ugh, I, I'm gonna use this for a couple of things I'm working on right now. I'm not even kidding. You can even add layers and gradients and all the fancy things you'd want to to make images pop, especially useful after you remove the background too, which is all built in. I promise you I'd show the SDK, here it is. It's actually that simple. That's all you have to do in order to render an image in a React app in an optimized fashion. Have you ever wished the Next.js image component worked for video? I know I have, and here, it's just built in. The more I look, the more I'm blown away. I have a feeling you will be too. Check them out today at soydiv.link slash image kit. And if it wasn't clear earlier, I'm getting no special treatment from Google. I got no early heads up. They're not paying me any money. This is just me using it more and realizing I was wrong. And also talking to my friends over at Artificial Analysis, who broke down just how good VO3 is right after I had started discovering it for myself. It crushed their leaderboard for video gen in general, like just absolutely slaughtered everything else on it. It's way better than Sora. Sora just kind of feels bad now that I compare things a lot more. And the audio side is actually like pretty good and makes for the output to feel significantly more compelling. It's priced at 50 cents per second of video, which is the same price that the previous model was, but it raises to 75 cents per second of video with audio. Their benchmarks are just video without audio because they haven't had any other model that can do video and audio at the same time like this before. The results are absolutely nuts. I was playing with it a bunch yesterday and it generated some pretty compelling stuff in my opinion. Here's one of the first things that I put out. Wanna be fast like me? Check out T3 chat. Like the amount of different things it just did correctly is absurd. It transitioned between scenes well. It let a subject come into and out of focus well, synced their voice with their face perfectly, changed scenes again, it then had text render with like a nice effect that said the thing I told it to say. Even the hands were solid. Like it did an incredible job. I did not expect it to come out this well. I had just seen other people doing demos with it. It's like, wait, it can do that much? I went and played more. There was a lot of edges that I had to get through. The biggest one being the flow website, which is so bad. We'll go over some of the ways it's bad in just a bit. I was trying to prompt it to look like me back when I still had the blonde hair and mustache and it came out looking like prime. But another test, I tried this one like eight times and this is the best I could do. Something caused the first still to look awful. I don't know why it's like that. None of the rest had that problem. Once you it plays, it's fine, but you'll notice some details on this one. 
Use code VEO at checkout for one month free on T3 chat. Yeah, it isn't great at text. <laughs> it tried, but it's not great at it. You need to give it a very small amount of text to render. And even if you tell it to not put in subtitles, it just will sometimes. The free month code included there did work, but we've already burned through all of those. But you can use the same code VO to get your first month for just a dollar. So you can use all of the models on T3Chat for one dollar for your first month. I think it's a pretty good deal. It's only eight bucks a month normally, but still feel free to give it a shot. That one will run indefinitely, but only for new customers. If you've subscribed in the past, don't try and cancel to get it. It doesn't work that way. Anyways, but the more common problem, and I ran into this a lot, it will constantly fall back to the much worse VO2 model. I was trying earlier to generate a bathrobe rant similar to the stuff that Uncle Bob does. I gave it a prompt describing what I wanted, hit submit, and then realized after that I had forgotten to change the quality option from quality to highest quality with experimental audio from VO3. And every time you submit something, it resets. And even if I click something else that used it, it will still reset unless you just clicked it, which is obnoxious. And also the thing that I made the mistake of here is I assumed when you do frames to video and you give it a frame that you've saved, that it would still use the thing you selected. Because if you do ingredients to video and you select something for it to start and you try to submit it with VO3 selected, it will fail. It says in the corner here, and I need to unfull screen for you to see it. Switching you to a compatible model for this feature. Submit again to confirm or check settings for details. I wish it told me where in settings to check. I don't even know what settings to check. But that reminds me of another fun thing that we encountered when I was trying to set this up. I wanted to upload pictures. Originally, you couldn't. They made this change like this morning. So I had a photo of myself I wanted to use because I wanted it to generate the intro for me of me. So I hit the crop button, told it to do that. We sit here for a minute. We wait. And then we get this error. This upload might vol violate our policies. Please try again with a different image or send feedback. Fine. Not great, but fine. Chat was theorizing that it might be because I'm too famous. I didn't think that could possibly be the case. So I went and Google image searched for random guy, took a picture of a random guy, uploaded that and said, and as you can see here, it worked fine. Then someone else had the funny idea of what if you flip yourself, so like rotate it 180 degrees, so it's upside down. Tried that, it failed. So then I took myself and I blurred my face out and that worked. Just blurring my face out allowed it to work. But the results for that were hilarious because I had to use frames to video where you give it like the first frame and it didn't do the audio. And even though the prompt specifies at the bottom here, do not include subtitles, it forgot to include the audio. It only included subtitles. It also made me somewhat Indian and did not do any of the things I wanted for it to. <laughs> Annoying. What's more annoying is each one of these generations takes 150 credits and you get 1200 credits for your $250 subscription. That means you get 80 generations and usually you're not doing one at a time, you're doing two at a time. So you effectively get 40 prompts with the default settings. And if you made the mistake of letting it fall back on VO2, then you just wasted a bunch of tokens for no reason at all. Annoying. <laughs> Very annoying UX. And I haven't even showed you the homepage, which is the most unusable thing I've experienced in a minute. And it's like, it's my job to use bad software. It's so bad. This is the default state it's in. You just like can't find anything from it. Thankfully, they added this button, which by the way, when you don't have anything generated yet, breaks terribly. But once you get through that and you can start going in, you have this, which isn't too bad. Then you go to the scene builder and it gets bad again. They have the add to scene button. So if I wanted to extend this one, see if I make this intro a little bit longer. Oh, also fun fact. You can't hear the audio in the scene builder view. There is no way for me to hear what's going on here. I have to go back to the other view to hear things. But if I recall, I had like a weird, awkward, like sound at the end of this. Let me go back to the other view to hear it. I just did a video about Google IO, but I missed something. I thought the video model was mediocre. I was wrong. I just. Yeah, it's the weird breath at the end. Cool, I'll stop it there. Then we will extend it and say, make sure we're on the right model because again it keeps changing back to vo2 even though this is the vo3 clip i'm trying to extend i almost want to try it so you can see how much worse it is in comparison switching you to a compatible model for this feature submit again to confirm look at that you can't even use it on vo2 quality it bumps you to fast yeah there's so much potential here and just none of it's being realized because this ui is awful 
it it tricked me into thinking this was all much worse than it actually is. I wish they just gave us the model in a more reasonable like shape for us to play with and consume, but VO3 is not on the API yet. There's no way for us to use any of it yet. So sorry, T3 chat, can't add this. But despite all of that, it's still just an incredible model. Do you know what's even better than this spaghetti? T3 chat. Like what? What? Do you guys remember like a year and a half ago how far we were from Will Smith eating spaghetti? It's not Will Smith, but that is absolutely spaghetti being eaten. It's kind of crazy <laughs> where that's all at. Google doesn't know how to make creative tools or really power tools in general. They make decent enough consumer facing software. They make decent enough infrastructure and they make incredible models and generative tools. But they don't know how to make like a good video editor. If you don't believe me, go try the one they built for YouTube. It's it's interesting. It's a it's often cited as a good example of a Flutter app. If you can predict what that means for the quality of experience. <sighs> but the model here is so good. And once again, what I'm excited about is what people will do with this tool. But I'm also a bit terrified because this looks better than some like iPhone video I see. Things like verifying your identity just got a lot sketchier because if I'm trying to like steal your account on Coinbase and it makes me do the thing where I have to tilt my head left to right to prove that I am indeed me with the face scan against the ID, I can take a photo of you that I have. I can throw it into one of these models and say, person looks towards camera. He then tilts his head to the left. He then tilts his head to the right and it will just work. And then you have a thing you can use to fake someone's identity. Or you can take a photo of some like random kid that you have the grandparents information of, do a fake FaceTime call with them and get them to do things they probably shouldn't. There are so many terrifying use cases here that I understand why they're being restrictive. It's a shame they're restricting me from uploading my face because I'm too famous, but I get it. The, the implications of what you can do with something like this are terrifying. But it's also really compelling. The stuff that I've seen others generate and the stuff I've generated myself even has been unbelievably good. Here's their Flow TV where you can just see random things that have been generated. Oh, it's generating cringe music with it instead of like actual audio. I also use it with VO2. Can you filter it to be VO3 only? Because VO2 is like a bad model and VO3 is like a groundbreaking one. God, these are nightmare fuel. You want to like ruin a kid? Just put them on Flow TV for a few hours. It's like those haunted children's cartoons on YouTube that are AI generated already just got significantly scarier too. <sighs> yeah, this is compelling stuff. I wanted to cover it because I didn't realize the extent at which I was wrong because it's way better than I thought. The audio stuff in particular with humans is significantly better than I thought. Yeah, people have been making it do stand up and it's surprisingly good at that too. So I went to the zoo the other day, and all they had was one dog. It was a Shih Tzu. <laughs> like, it, it made an actual joke there. And you could imagine, once it has the ability to extend using this model, or keep track of how the voice is supposed to sound, or take a frame and keep generating, you could literally make a full stand-up set for a couple hundred bucks. Kind of nuts. <laughs> the potential here is insane. I'm not going to pretend the joke was really good or anything, but the fact that it can do this stuff at all is insane. I'm almost scared that what this will do is it will make well-produced video seem like it's AI generated. And if it's not like a crappy phone video, people aren't going to trust it as much. This is going to really change our like trust vectors for what is or isn't real. I don't even know now how I will be able to tell if a given video that is sent to me is real or not, because this stuff is actually that compelling. And if somebody makes a less restricted version of this model or gets something close to this in the open source world or with stable diffusion, I'm scared. I'm legitimately scared. <laughs> you are telling me to try again generating with my blurred photo. I'll be more specific. Clean, shaven, white man. Da, 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 da. Be sure to include the audio of him speaking. Make sure it's still VO3. Yep, cool. Let's see how it does. Switching you to a compatible model. So it's too fast, not even quality. Yeah, you can't do it. You, you can't do anything but text the video for VO3 right now, which I'm pretty sure is a safety thing just due to the nature of what this model is capable of. 
And as we've now seen, and I can show more examples of, the gap between two and three is a bit absurd. This is what I accidentally did with two. You can see the audio doesn't exist. It got the text okay there, but it went a little absurd with the subtitles. This one was really funny. It feels like a Bollywood movie. <laughs> the way the T3 chat fades into the screen is so hilarious. Yeah. I, this is why I didn't care because none of the video models have felt like a significant improvement from that to this point. I did not realize how absurd this got, especially with how bad the UX is. Like I hit the upscale button because when you download, you can choose what format you want to download in. If it's not frozen, which it was there for a sec, you can pick animated GIF, original or upscaled. Upscale just doesn't work. I've been sitting here waiting for this to upscale for like an hour now, and it just hangs forever. It does say this can take a few minutes, but like, what's a few minutes, Google? This has been an hour. Yeah. What did you think? Is this exciting or scary? Until next time, peace nerds. This is not a generated outro, I promise.